Hi, how are you? I hope you're doing well. So today I am going to be answering your questions. And there's quite a few questions. Thank you for sending them in. I am very excited to answer them. I hope you enjoy. And the first half will be questions about me. And the second half is going to be about ASMR and YouTube in general. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, first things first, I received a couple of questions about my English and my accent. So the questions were, did your family live outside of Japan for a period when you were growing up? What is your accent? Um, I guess to answer this question or these questions, I think I need to briefly talk about my upbringing. So I was born and raised in Japan. But when I turned 14, our family moved to Sydney, Australia. It was because of my father's job at the time. And I went to a local school in Sydney. So、uh, basically, I had to learn English in order to. Take classes, do co curricular activities, pretty much anything to survive. So that is why I can speak English. And as for Japanese, it is my mother tongue. Both my parents speak Japanese. And as for my accent, it is mostly Australian accent. But because it has been over 12 years since our family moved back to Japan from Australia, I feel like my accent is not 100% Australian anymore.、Um, I have watched many British TV shows and films, as well as American TV shows and films. So. My accent is kind of everywhere these days. But I would say it's、uh, 70% Australian, 10% British, 10% American, 10% Japanese. <laughs> I think that's pretty accurate. The next question is. Does your work require English fluency? Yes, it does.、Um, some of my colleagues are Japanese, but most of them are non Japanese. In fact, my boss is not Japanese. So we are always communicating in English, and thus, English is a requirement at my workplace. So, along with these questions, I received a couple of interesting comments or questions. The first one is Most Japanese people speak English with an American accent. Why do you think that is?、Uh, I believe the reason why most Japanese people speak English with an American accent. Is simply because the English education in Japan is done in American English. But I didn't really get English education in Japan. I can't be 100% sure. <laughs> And the second one, this is my favorite. Explain the perfect Japanese. Perfect English backstory. But assuming you are an international super spy, 
you can lie. <laughs> well, I wish I was an international super spy, but unfortunately I am not. And this brings me to the next question. What do you do for a living? I actually work at a tech company, so that's what I do for a living. The next question is, do you live in Japan? Please recommend your favorite tourist attraction in Japan. Um, so the first half of the question, yes, I do live in Japan. And the second half, uh, it really depends on what you are seeking for during your trip to Japan. If you are a city boy or city girl, I think Tokyo, exploring Tokyo is a must. But if you like the nature or if you want to enjoy good food, I really recommend you to go to Hokkaido. It's a prefecture uh, in the northern part of Japan. It is um, pretty vast as an area, so I feel like you have to spend at least three days there, but it's highly worth it. And next, how tall are you? I am about 156 to 157 in centimeters. And that is in feet. I think that is about 5-1. I don't know if the conversion is accurate, but roughly speaking, I think I'm around that height. <laughs> so, the next question is, are you a tea person? or a coffee person, or perhaps both. Um, I used to be a huge tea drinker, but during my uni days, I had so many espresso drinks, so many cups of espresso drinks. I feel like I am starting to convert myself into a coffee person but still I love me a good cup of tea <laughs> so I guess I love both <laughs> next what is your favorite sport have you played any sports yourself so my favorite kind of sports is Anything that is fast-paced and that is not turn-based. So I really enjoy watching rugby and I love watching tennis matches. So when we used to live in Sydney, our family would go to Melbourne to see Australian Open. It's, um, it's such a good memory for me. And have I played any sports before? Well, I, I dance. <laughs> but other than that, I actually did a little bit of rowing when I lived in Sydney. But that was only for like... And yeah, so not much experience, I guess. What are your favorite musicians slash favorite songs? What kind of music do you listen to daily? Um, so my favorite band is Muse, the alternative rock band. And I also love the Beatles. 
and I also like listening to Adele. She has such a unique voice. I really, really love it. And I was wishing so hard for her to come to Japan to do concerts. But I read some interviews saying that she won't be doing any concerts outside of the UK. So maybe I won't have any chance seeing her in Japan. Yeah. And the kind of music that I listen to daily, I really like classical music in general. And I also really enjoy listening to video game soundtracks, especially battle themes. Those are my favorites.、Um, next question.、Ah, this is such a difficult question to answer. As far as entertainment, in what order are these your preference? Video games, books, movies. TV, the theater, sporting events, music, including concerts, amusement parks, or something else I didn't mention.、Hmm. Okay. Well, I truly love every single one of them equally. So it's really difficult to rank them. But I feel like out of all these, I go to sporting events the least.、Mm. And I think I spend the largest amount of time on video games and books. But I really enjoy other entertainments as well, so it's very difficult to answer. <laughs> so, next, how do you usually spend your weekends?、Mm, I usually spend my weekends at home doing laundry, probably. Washing dishes that I didn't wash during the week. <laughs> And I also read manga, watch anime, play video games. And I also go to my parents' place, it's pretty nearby. And play with our dog. <laughs> I guess that's how I usually spend my weekends. And the next question is also very difficult. I'd be curious to know who you would invite to your dream dinner party with three guests. They can be historical figures or people alive today. It's such a hard question because you also have to consider if those three guests would. Get along well with each other. <laughs> so,、um, I feel like if I have to only pick one, I know who I want to invite, and that is Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> It's just, she seems like such a nice person. She seems very down to earth. And she seems so much fun to be with. So, yeah, I would like to invite her for dinner. <laughs> um, next question is What's your favorite anime and or anime genre, if any? So, if I have to pick. Anime titles that are not based on existing manga series, I would probably choose Psycho Pass and Tiger and Bunny. 
I also really like Violet Evergarden, but that one is actually based on a novel. Um, I also really like Ghost in the Shell, but this one is also based on manga, so that may not count. Mm, as for genre, I really like sci-fi, and I also enjoy fantasy. Also, strictly speaking, it is not anime, but I truly enjoyed Arcane. It's such an intriguing and fascinating work. I recommend it to those who haven't watched it yet. It's really good. And I don't even play LOL. <laughs> so the next question is, which one is your favorite stand? <laughs> I love this question. And I'd probably pick uh, Purple Haze because I really like how that stand represents this ferocious and aggressive side of Fugo. Is that how you pronounce his name in English? I'm not sure. But yeah. And I also find it really fascinating that there's a backstory to it, which is that because Purple Haze, its ability was too strong, the author, Araki Sensei, had to kick him out of the series, or the storyline I mean. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. I also really like Gold Experience, it's such a beautiful stand. And if we were simply talking about the aesthetics of stands, I would probably choose Highway Star. It's very simple, but very sleek, and I like it. So the next question is, why the name Melissa? Um, so in Japanese, Melissa is not necessarily a conventional name, so it's not my real name. This name actually comes from a song by this Japanese band called Pornography. I know it's a strange name, <laughs> but this song Melissa was actually an opening theme for my favorite manga of all time, Fullmetal Alchemist. I believe it was the very first opening theme of the first series of the anime. And also, Melissa sounds somewhat similar to my real name. <laughs> Next question is, what's your favorite food? Do you like to cook? Um, yes, I love to cook. And my favorite food, I love to eat in general, so it's very difficult to pick only one. But I really like pizza. <laughs> I also like Thai food in general. And I also like this Japanese grilled chicken on skewer. We call it yakitori, which literally means grilled chicken. But those are my favorites. Next question is, what are your favorite travel destinations? It's very difficult to pick only one, but the first place that pops into my head is um, Kiruna in Sweden. This is a town in the Arctic and I did dog sledding there. It was a truly magical experience 
and one of those unforgettable moments of my life. I also enjoyed Tunisia. I participated in this trekking tour in the Sahara Desert. It was very tough, but also surprisingly very enjoyable. And Bhutan was also quite an interesting place or country to visit because it is quite secluded in the mountains. It is pretty different from other parts of the world that I knew and the experience I had there sort of got me into thinking what true happiness is. It was a very eye-opening trip for me. So now I am going to answer questions about ASMR and YouTube. So the first question is, who are your favorite ASMR artists slash YouTubers? Well, it's impossible for me to list all of my favorite ASMR artists. So uh, I, I'll just pick three. I love Behind the Moon. I love Sophie Michelle ASMR and I love Maddie ASMR. But there are so many more great ASMR artists, I feel kind of bad not mentioning them. And as for YouTubers in general, I like watching um, beauty guru contents, or maybe you don't call them gurus anymore. It's kind of an old school way of calling them, I guess, but I like beauty contents. Next, how long have you watched slash listened to ASMR? Um, my very first encounter with ASMR was back in 2018. Um, I was very, very busy with work around that time and I was incredibly stressed out and I knew that both my body and mind was so tired but somehow I couldn't go to sleep. So I looked for many different remedies for insomnia and ASMR was one of them. So that means it's been about four years. Next, what is your favorite ASMR genre slash trigger? Mm, I like role plays and as for triggers, I really like visual triggers like hand movements, face tapping, and follow the light trigger. And I also really like mic scratching. <laughs> Next question is, I love that your channel is fully bilingual, although I guess it's a lot of work shooting each video twice. What made you decide to do it this way? rather than focusing on just one language. Well, I happen to be able to speak both English and Japanese, so it was... Um, I didn't really think twice when I made that decision. It was quite natural for me, but yes, it is quite a lot of work to shoot each video twice. <laughs> 
Next question is, what made you start your YouTube channel? Well, ever since I started watching ASMR videos in 2018, I had always wanted to give back to the ASMR community, but I didn't really have that chance. But when COVID hit, I got quite a lot of free time at home and I thought to myself, oh, maybe this is the time for me to start filming ASMR contents. And that's how it all started. Last but not least, what are some of your goals for your channel going forward? Well, as of now, I don't really have this big dream or anything, but I think it would be nice if I can sort of change some people's mind, especially some Japanese people's mind. Those who were thinking that ASMR is only sexual, I want to tell them that it is so much more. It can relax you, it can release your anxiety, it can help you go to sleep. It's beneficial in so many different ways. And please don't get me wrong, I think it is okay to have this genre of ASMR that is sexual, but I just want those people to know that there are many other genres in ASMR, and that is something I want to express through my channel. I don't know if it's a goal, but that's something I want to achieve. Well, I believe that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I myself had a lot of fun filming it, answering your questions. Um, I think I will see you in my next video. Take care and good night.